Okay, I'm going to make a few comments on the intermediate value theorem and then we'll come back and work some more examples. Remember first of all what the theorem says. It says if f of a is some value and f of b is some value and this is a continuous function on this interval from a to b and any, any y value in here between f of a and f of b, if there is some number y between these two y values then that will correspond to a point on the curve and there must be some x value and we often call it c between a and b somewhere on this interval such that f of c is equal to y. Now that's what the theorem says. One thing to note is the theorem is what we call an existence theorem. It says that this particular x value does in fact exist in this interval. It doesn't say where that x value is and it doesn't tell us how to find it. It just simply tells us that that x value does exist. There will be some x value that if we plug it into this function we'll get out this y value. Okay, another comment. The intermediate value theorem depends on the completeness of the real numbers. And one of the things we say about the real number line is that it is complete. There are no holes and no gaps. If you had a function such as this, suppose this was f of x equals x squared okay, and that looks kinda like the x squared function but we're, we're told that x is in the set of rational numbers and mathematicians all often use the symbol q to stand for the set of rational numbers and when we say that we mean that no x values down here will be irrational well how many irrational numbers are there in this interval well there's an infinite number of of irrational numbers as well as an infinite number of rational numbers in this interval. If you were to just graph the the rational numbers or if you were to restrict the, the domain of the function to rational numbers then the function wouldn't be a continuous curve. It would be a bunch of little dots infinitely close together but there would also be an infinite number of little holes in there and so then if we had a value such as this say y is equal to 7 and the value down here ended up being the square root of 7 that would not be in the domain of rational numbers so the intermediate value theorem would not apply it depends on the completeness of real numbers the same would be true if instead of the rational numbers we had the irrational numbers here it's the rational numbers and the irrational numbers together that make up a complete set of numbers the, the number line what we call the real number line is complete. There are no holes and no gaps. If you put put all the rational numbers on here and plot them on this number line, and there would be an infinite number of them infinitely close together but a bunch of little holes. But then you also add the irrational numbers. The rational numbers and irrational numbers together make a complete number line. And that allows the inter intermediate value theorem to hold as true. We have to have a complete domain for our, for our x values. Okay, another comment. Suppose we have uh, the intermediate value theorem and we're told that at some value a the function has some value f of a and at some value b the function has some value f of b and we're told there's some number y here and, and if this function is continuous, if it goes from from this point to this point in a continuous fashion, then there must be some number on this interval where some number c somewhere in here where f of c is equal to y. And the point I'm making here is that there may be more than one. This function might go up and back down and back up. Okay, something like that. And you can see here there are three places these three points in this particular sketch I've drawn all three of these x values have a corresponding y value right there and that's okay the intermediate value theorem says there will be a value between a and b some number c could be here or here or here or somewhere else depending on the function the intermediate value theorem says there will be some number between a and b such that f of c is equal to y but there could be more than one that still satisfies the requirement of there being one 
this, the intermediate value theorem simply says that there will be one or more. And then the last comment, let's look at an example of a discontinuous function. Suppose we have x-axis and f of x here. Suppose we have some function that does something like this. There's a step discontinuity. And then suppose we have our number a here. And that corresponds to some value over here, f of a. And our number b here. And that corresponds to some value here, f of b. Well, let's pick a y value right here. And that value is between f of a and f of b. It's between those two numbers. So is there a value, an x value in this range, such that f of x is equal to y? And no, there's not. There's no x value that corresponds to y values in this gap right here. Okay, In this range, you can't find an x value that will give you one of those y values. And so we see the intermediate value theorem does not apply to functions that are not continuous. It could apply to a continuous section of a function. Like if I had, for example, a here and b here in this interval, the inter intermediate value theorem would apply. But you can't have a discontinuity in the interval. The conclusion of the intermediate value theorem that there will be an x value that corresponds to that y value is not guaranteed to hold if the function is not continuous on that interval.